الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته the respected brothers and sisters those who are with us here in the Islamic Center of North Palm Beach those who are online listening to us from India and other areas I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of you with beneficial knowledge and righteous actions We have uh, completely stopped <clears throat> because of Eid. And so we're going to go back to where we started from. And every Wednesday we have a fiqh class from Al-Mulakhas Al-Fiqhi by Ma'ali Sheikh, Dr. Sheikh Salih bin Fouzan Al-Fouzan, Hafidahu Allah Ta'ala wa Ra'ah. So every Wednesday... We have a fiqh class from the book of a sheikh, Salih bin Fuzan al-Fuzan, al-Mulakhas al-Fiqhi Summary of Islamic Jurisprudence. And we have finished the first volume, and we are actually in the middle of the second volume, and we are studying Bab al-Mawarit, a chapter regards to inheritance. And this is a very important topic because many Muslims, they're ignorant about this affair of distributing inheritance and how much each person gets. It's extremely important because death can strike any time. And a person, if he doesn't know what he's doing, he may oppress his brother or sister or his family members. It's very important to know the shares and each shareholder, how much he gets, how much he gets and the like. So basically here, we're going to have a review of what we have studied together. So I have with me here Matan Al-Manduma al rahabiyah This is the line of poetry of Imam al-Rahabi in regards to al-Mawarit, in regards to the law of inheritance. So he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, asbabu mirati al-wara talatah, kullun yafidu rabbahu al-wiratah. So basically what he said, he said the reason for inheritance when it comes to al-wara, the people. So there are three, three categories. طيب. He said the first one, وَهِيَ نِكَاحٌ وَوَلَاءٌ وَنَسَبٌ مَا بَعْدَهُنَّ لِلْمَوَارِيتِ سَبَبٌ He said there are three. نكاح نكاح مارج so if a man did a marriage contract with a woman even if he did not consummate the marriage and he died after they did the contract she is entitled to inherit from him are you with me? Now I'm going to give you different scenarios. Second scenario, he divorced her while she was on her idda. She was waiting for her idda to finish. So he divorced her one day before her idda finished. He died in that day. She's still considered his wife. She has the right to inherit. And very important that you document your marriage. Very important to document it. You can do the Islamic marriage, but you have to go to the courthouse to document your marriage. A reason being so that the, the, the rights of the wife 
and the husband are protected. And I will tell you one story happened in Saudi Arabia in the city of Riyadh. The Saudi man, he married a second wife. He already had a, had a wife, but he married a second wife. But he made a mistake. He did not document the marriage. Then uh, two years later, he passed away. Rahimahullah. So the second wife, she went to the first wife and she told her that I need my share of inheritance. I'm the second wife. And you know, the share of inheritance of the wife or the wives, even if he was married to four wives, we've, we've been through that. If they have children, then if it is one or two or three or four, they are to get how much? Ya Hassan, do you remember? How much? Maz. Uh, yes. how, much, how much do they get if they have children? Uh, they, how much the wives? They share one eight. One eight. Ah, cent. Ah, cent. If there were no kids, how much do they get? They, they split one fourth. One fourth. Remember this. If they. If there were no kids, they would have split one fourth. If there was children, they would inherit. Then they reduce their share. يعني الميرات حقه من الميرات يتقلص. So the right of inheritance they get reduced because of the children. You get it? So you get one four. Uh, if they have no children, one four. If they have children, then one eight. طيب. So this woman, she said, do you have any document that proves that you've been married to him? She said, no. We got nothing for it. Then after that, she went to the courthouse. She went to the judge. And she complained to him about this, her situation. He said, do you have any document? She said, no. He said, there is nothing I can do for you. If you don't have a document to prove that you were married to this man who passed away, there is nothing I can do for you. Then she began to make dua and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help her relieve her hardship. This judge, he had a little vacation. So he took some time off from his, his job. He went to see his family in Riyadh. And he met this man. And this man, he was very sad. He said, what's going on? Why are you sad? He said, I miss my friend. He said, who's your friend? Someone died two years ago. What's his name? He gave him the name. He said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hmm. He said, were you a witness when this man got married? He said, yes. He said, do you have another witness? He said, yes. As a matter of fact, there is another witness. He said, I want both of you to come to the courthouse. They came to the courthouse and he gave this woman her haqq of inheritance. It shows you right there, Ikhwan, brothers and sisters, when you get married, you make sure you document your marriage. طيب. So the first thing, nikah. Now, if a man gets married to a woman and then she asks for khula and he grants her khula, and then he dies after that. Does she inherit or she does not inherit? There is no inheritance for her. Why? Because al-khula is what? What is al-khula? Huh? Annulment. Fesh. Fesh nikah. Al-khula is annulment of the contract. So the contract is null void now. She got nothing. Nothing. Tayyip. But if they have children, the children they inherit from their father. Tayyip, they inherit from their father. 
So he said, number one, nikah, marriage. This is one of the reason a person can inherit. So the wife can inherit from her husband, the husband can inherit from the wife. Wawala. What is lwala? Anybody knows? Do you remember lwala? What is lwala? Lwala is when someone, like for example, you have someone who freed a slave. He freed him. So if this slave dies, then the one who freed him can what? Inherit from him. Remember that. Look how Islam honors the people who do good. Because this man, he freed this man for the sake of Allah. So Allah honors him to inherit from that person who was enslaved. Look at that. Now he's a free man. طيب. That is al-wala. Wa nasab. Nasab is what? What is nasab? Lineage. Okay, what do they mean by lineage? Yes, your son, your daughter, and the like is lineage. Your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, and the like. So now, the father and the mother, how, how much do they get? No. The, let, let's start with the, the mother. How much does the mother get? Grandkids. Grandkids. How much does she get? She gets one third. She gets one six. Not one third. One six. If the deceased, if the deceased did not leave any kids, how much does she get? One third. Okay. Now I'm going to give you some scenarios. I want you to give me the answer, brother Hassan. A man dies. He leaves a mother a father, and no children. And he leaves a brother and a sister. Okay, I'm going to repeat again. A man dies, he leaves a father, a mother, a brother, and a sister. How do you divide? One third, okay, and the father get half. Get half. What happened to the brother and sister? One fourth. Wait. One fourth. One eighth. Wrong. Jawab khata. This is the wrong answer. Wait. Two opinions. Two opinions. The, Go ahead. The, correct, the most correct opinion is. Like you said, the mother and father will get one third, mm-hmm. and the father will block the sibling. The father, the, no, I didn't say the grandpa, I said the father. Pay attention. Sure, sure, sure. You got mixed up. Mother and father. al amr. You got mixed up. <laughs> okay, when talking about the grandparents, the grandfather, grandfather. there's two opinions among the scholars. Yeah. There's those who say, that the grandfather, he blocks who? What does he block? He, the, wait. The grandfather blocks who? The siblings. The siblings. Ah, he blocks uncles and aunts and their children, cousins. There is another opinion. They said no. But the most, the most correct opinion, he does. And this is the opinion of Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan, Sheikh Bin Baz, Sheikh Al-Utaymeen, Abu Bakr Siddiq, from the companions and others. Tayyip. The father. Okay, not the grandpa, the father. Do scholars disagree about the, the, the father? They don't. There are no two opinions. There's only one opinion. So what does he do? He gets everything. He blocks the sibling. They don't get anything. Remember this, the father and the son, write it down. The father and the son, they block, they block 
the uncles and aunts and their children. Okay? So in this case, the father gets what? Everything. And the brother and, and sister, they don't get anything, they are blocked. Because Al-Hajb, Al-Hajb, which is blockage, is of two types. Al-Hajb Al-Juz'i wal hajb Al-Kulli Partial blockage and full blockage. Okay, can anybody give me a scenario of partial blockage? We went through this. Like what? Partial. Yes, partial. He doesn't get blocked all the way, but partially. Like what? Yeah. Give me an example. Father die, mm-hmm. leave a daughter, and father, and brothers. Yes. Father died. Father died. Yeah, okay. And there is? In that case, the grandpa will inherit, and the uncle will inherit. Also the daughter. If, the it, uh, based on the other opinion. Based on the other opinion. Based on the other opinion. You're talking about the grandpa. Yes. Yes, based on the other opinion. And the opinion that says he blocks the, the sibling, the siblings don't inherit for, with him. So it depends. But we're talking about partial blockage. Is, is, is it like um, uh, a father passes away and he has like three daughters and a son? Yes. The, the three daughters will first get two thirds. And the rest of the son, is that partial blockage? Yes, okay. that is partial blockage. Okay. Because if, they were, if there was no son there, how much does the daughter get? They if there is one daughter, how much does, does she yeah, get? She gets half. She gets half. If there are two, they get? They get, uh, they get two two thirds. Third. They get two thirds. Are you with me? Yeah. طيب. Now, we understand what nasab means lineage. Everybody understand what nasab is. Tayyib. So he, and then after that, he said, Mawani'u al-irt. Mawani'u al-irt. Meaning, those things that prevent a person from inheriting. He said, وَيُمْنَعُ الشَّخْصُ مِنَ الْمِرَاتِ وَاحِدَةٌ مِنْ عِلَلِ الْتَلَاتِ He said, there are three Reasons why a person cannot inherit. Riqun. Riqun is slavery. So if a person is a slave, he cannot inherit. Yes. Okay, this is the first one. Unless he is freed. Waqatlun and murder. Because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, La yaritul qatil. The murderer does not inherit. So if someone kills his father to inherit, then he does not inherit. And that's why the ulama, they use this qaida in, an, in qawaid al-fiqh. It's a foundation of fiqh. They say, مَنْ تَعَجَّلَ الشَّيْءَ قَبْلَ أَوَانِهِ عُوْقِبَ بِحِرْمَانِهِ When someone hastened to get something, before it's due time, then will be, he will be deprived by way of it. He will not get it. Because this man, he was not patient. He goes and he kills his father to get, the, to get inheritance. So he's to, to be deprived of that inheritance. So al-qatil, the murderer, does not inherit. Tayyip? Yes. وَاخْتِلَافُ din. اختلاف دين. اختلاف دين when a person apostate may Allah protect us from that when someone leaves Islam okay I'll give you an example 
A man, he dies, he leaves a father and a mother, and a son and a daughter, and the son apostated. May Allah protect us from that. Hassan, how do you divide this? No, start with the parents first. Okay, the father, the mother... No, no, no. Wait. Star? Okay, how much does the daughter get? Okay, you said the, 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 the mother gets one six, right? Yes. Okay, the, the, the daughter, how much does she get? Would it be. Would she get, would she get two thirds? No. No. Half. She gets half. Ascent. She gets half. Okay. Now, the rest, where does it go? It goes to the father. It goes to the father. Okay? It goes to the father. The son does not get anything. Why? Because he apostated. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا يرت المسلم الكافر ولا الكافر المسلم. The Muslim does not, does not inherit from the disbeliever, nor does this disbeliever inherit from Muslim. the Muslim and the believer. So for example, a revert. There are many cases of revert. People, they revert to Islam. And then the parents die. Can they inherit from their parents? They cannot. But if they leave a will for them, for example, the non-Muslim father, he left a will. And he said, I want to give this house to my son and this house to my daughter. This is permissible because it's not inheritance. It's like a gift. A will is like a gift, basically. You're gifting your property to your children. So nothing wrong with that. But inheritance, no. Inheritance is haram. Likewise, if the son dies or the daughter dies, and they left property that none Muslim father or mother cannot inherit from their children because they are Muslims and there is ikhtilaf al deen It's not the same religion. Islam and kufr al So they don't inherit from them. So this is what the Sheikh said. He said, فَفْهَمْ فَلَيْسَ الشَّكُّ كَالْيَقِينِ so you, you need to understand this because doubt is not like certainty. Are they the same? And the ulama, they have a qaida you know, in, in qawaid al-fiqh. They say, al-yaqeen la yuzalu bi-shik. Al-yaqeen la yuzalu bi-shik. Certainty cannot be nullified with doubt. Certainty cannot be nullified with doubt. Can anybody give us an example of this qaida? What does it mean? If you thought you broke your wudu, right. just a thought. Yes. And you're not certain about it. Mm -hmm. Your doubt doesn't count for anything. Yes. Ahsant. For example, a man performs the wudu. Then he starts getting doubt about his wudu. Al asl baqa al shay ala ma kan. The origin and the principle is that state of wudu is still the way it is. Unless you have an evidence that says otherwise. If you did not use the restroom, you did not pass gas, or anything like that, then the principle, you are still in a state of tahara, state of purification. And it's very important, especially for the people who have al-waswas. So some people, they have al-waswas al-qahri. You know, the, they call it OCD, right? OCD. Tayyip. So this is extremely beneficial. This qaida al-fiqhiyya can benefit those people a lot. For example, you make wudu. The people of OCD, they're going to start having whispers and doubt. Oh, you left your face. You did not wash your face. Oh, you left your arm and the like. So you want to kill these whispers. What do you do? 
you disregard it completely. You see, you disregard it. You don't pay attention to it as if it doesn't exist. And inshallah, you will be relieved from those whispers. Now. Good question. So if somebody got a dog, let's say um, a brother might have on some sweat, but a dog knows, probably yes. touched you, you wasn't sure because you didn't see if it was a big or his nose just touched you, but you felt something. Does that count as like you ain't see it to be sure? If there is no if there is no wetness, there is no wetness, you should not worry about it. And we can use this qaida here. Al Asal Baka at Tahara. Illa bidalin. Illa bi karina. The the principle that that tahara, that state of tahara is still there. Unless we have an evidence that says otherwise. And since we don't have an evidence, then you should not worry about it. Unless you know for sure that he licked you. Now, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all al ilm al nafi' al amal salih, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, jazakum Allah khair.